Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to continue some builds that I've been working on. Uh, we're going to start work on a 600 ton coaling tower. So stay tuned. Alright, so we are going to get started into the coaling tower. Now, the coaling tower in Grafton, West Virginia is a 600 ton coaling tower. I started this years and years and years ago. Um, I had bought the Walther's uh, coaling, concrete coaling tower to uh, build from. You know, I knew I had to scratch build a lot of it, but uh, you know, in the video you'll see what changes I made and what things I had to do. And basically I just about ended up scratch building the whole thing. Because the Walther's kit, while it had some parts I could use, had to be changed. I couldn't use the parts as they were because the panels were, you know, there's just so many differences. that, And I wanted it to say Grafton when people looked at it. So um, let's just get into this and I'll explain the tower with some pictures and stuff. And we'll uh, get into the build where I left off years ago and continue on with the coaling tower. Here's just several shots of this structure. Uh, this thing was just massive. I mean, there's there's no other words to describe it. This was a 600 ton coaling tower, like I had said. Here you can see a shot of it when it was being formed to have the concrete poured and just, you know, the amount of steel and wood it took just to build the forms to make this thing. I'm not sure how many tons of, of concrete it took to pour this. But, you know, it's just, it's just a massive structure. You know, it fed coal to four different tracks, and it had another track that, you know, they brought in the coal and sand. The sand was initially part of the coaling tower as well, and they could get coal and sand from the tower. Later on, they did separate the sand out. But, uh, you know, in this huge facility, you can see all the steam locomotives sitting around here in the heyday of steam. I mean, just, it's, it was constantly in service, you know, just hard to keep up with the coal, I'm sure. It also had a couple of smaller buildings attached to it. There was one here that was used morally for maintenance and parts, upkeep, and that type of thing. This other structure to the right-hand side was where the engineers would come and get their assignments, and then they would go to their locomotive and go pick up their train from here. And usually all the coal sitting there and everything, you know, was just constantly being used. Here's the sanding facility once it was separated from the coaling tower. It became a separate identity later on. And, uh, you know, it's just, here you can see all four tracks that were serviced. There was a number of chutes on each track that they could go to to use for the coal. Here's a better shot of the facility where they brought the coal and sand into on this side and then it went into an elevator and up into the building itself. And here's a picture of the, well they got a few pictures here, of the structure the way it is. Now I started this years and years ago and you know it's missing the roof, it never did get the top, very top roof put on it. It's missing a leg in the center of the structure. It's just, uh, you know, it's got several parts that need to be upgraded just to the basic body of the building before we even get into starting details and stuff. It does have the windows and doors in it, however they need to be painted. They're just, you know, in the primer gray or whatever they came in when they were molded. So, you know, there's a lot of work to do on this. Here's just kind of a movable around view of the building as it is. You know, the glues back in the days when I started this weren't anywhere near as good as they are now. So there's several of these seams that I need to re-glue. And, you know, the glues now really melt, weld the plastic together a whole lot better than they used to do. You can see here a lot of these pieces had to be manufactured. A lot of the, even though this part of the structure was original to the Walters kit, I had to change the number of panels that went on the side of the concrete. You can see it's still missing a part of this upper side and a good bit of this had to be redone and rebraced to be put together the way I changed it and added everything to it the way I did. But uh, you know the first thing we're gonna have to do is just come back and sand and fix some of these panels and then re-glue the whole building back together just before we can get started working on anything else. 
Now one of the first things we're going to do is in between where the sand and coal came into the building, the structure itself, you can see there's kind of a building back in there. And the sand came in there to a boiler that, bo that heated the sand and dried it out. And then it was pumped up into the coaling tower. So we're going to build this little structure onto this uh, area here. So I cut a wall, then I cut a top for it. You know, and as I was piecing everything together in there, I, at first I did glue this top in there the way it was, and it, it just, it was too short. I needed to add more onto that wall, so I took the, the roof part off of this again, and then came back and ordered, or added another smaller part to it to raise the roof up to where the height needed to be according to the one in that picture. And this left a lot of, you know, open gaps and places in around the plastics, but we'll come back and fill that and take care of that later. Now the sand, when it came out of the top of this, went through two, through two square tubes and an end came up straight and then went to an angle that up into the coaling tower that brought the sand up into the tower itself. So I'm making two square tubes here just out of some uh, plastic angle that I had and then I'm going to get those to the proper height and then glue them onto the top of that structure. And then the remaining two pieces would have been in an angle that came off of these and then went on up into the structure itself. So I came back and cut some more angles and glued the two halves together, cut angles on either ends that are, you know, one was a little more than a 45, one was a little less. But I, after I got them glued together as a, a square, square tube like this, what I did was just take some tweezers and hold them into place. And I had to, you know, just take them off and, and trim them a little bit, put them back up, check it, trim it, and just get it to fit so that I could get it glued back in there and there wouldn't be a whole lot of gaps and, you know, places at the end. I wanted to be a bit snug in there so that the glue would have plenty of adherence to where all the surfaces met. And this is just those pieces put into place on top and now the tubing and everything is in there. And then I just use this, you know, vinyl spackle that you made for drywall and I fill all my cracks and holes and gaps and all that and then after sanding and getting everything together you know it just it fills all those holes and makes it look halfway decent this isn't quite totally done yet there's still some gaps and seams where those two side walls and stuff met that need to be filled a little more but basically that's on its way now where these two platforms are on the side of the building you can see that upper platform actually has a door that's cut back into the building and on the original structure you know here it, it never had that opening cut into it but I'm going to add all those platforms on so I came back and measured and marked and figured out where that door was going to be and I just went ahead and outlined it and drilled a hole so that I could start with a hole to cut from and just nibbled out where that door would be and, and gave myself that door opening that's, I guess, you know, they use this to go in to do a lot of the mechanical work inside. I'm not sure how the guts worked on all of this and the mechanics inside the structure, but I want the outside to look, you know, pretty realistic the way it was. Now, the other thing we need is a roof on this top up here. Now, you can see where I scratch built this and added the layers of plastics to form the beams and all that and use green stuff to fill that. You can see this is all pre-done except the windows and doors were the only thing that I you know were in the original kit that I could use everything else pretty much was about scratch build on this but we need to get the top on this now so I went through my junk box and found these two pieces of plastic that were big enough to cover the openings and I just laid them on the top and you know drew with the pencil lines on it and cut them to, to the two pieces out and then glued them in place you know, and it, this needs to be worked with here again, because this was molded concrete. So, you know, they wouldn't have had all these little gaps and, and crevices in it. So I went back with this same vinyl spackle again and filled in all that. And, uh, you know, it took a couple of times of sanding and filling and sanding and filling. And this is after the, the first sand and refill here. 
but basically once you do that a couple of times and it, it looks like a solid piece of concrete was molded all on the top when the concrete was poured and it gives a nice finish to it so once we come back and add the paint and everything on it it'll look like a solid piece of concrete without seams or anything now one of the other things is this legs that they're missing, you know, between the bays underneath this thing. I know I've got them somewhere in all of my stuff, but Lord knows where they are. I did look for a good while for them at one point and just finally gave up. But you can see also the roof or the, you know, underneath the bays here is wide open too. So eventually we'll have to fill that. But to begin with, we're going to put these legs back in place. And we've got that leg on the other side of the building that we're just going to duplicate that to basically make the legs for this one. So I measured that and cut these square panels out and figured the width of it. So I had to put some uh, styrene in between them to give the thickness of the wall that I needed. And I just glued that all together to make my wall. And once that was done and set up, I put it underneath where it needed to be and just put a couple of weights here to hold it into place so that I could go ahead and measure and get the height of the four legs that came up from that up to the structure itself. And once I had that measurement, then I had to make these legs. And they're not perfectly square, they're kind of a rectangle leg. So, you know, and the two middle ones are slightly different measurements than the two inside, outside legs. So I just cut all these pieces and started gluing them together to form four separate legs. And the first one I just, I did and fit it and placed with it and played with it to make sure it was going to be right before I went ahead and did the other three. But once that was together, I just came back and, you know, I like this to me to submit. It's a thick cement and it welds really well so I came back with that and just glued the rest of them together and here you can see the difference in the legs and laying next to the wall so now it's it's time to put those all on the wall so I start with one end and use my square to make sure it was right with the bottom of the wall and just glued that in place on the bottom wall and once that was in place I did the other end and got it ready to and you know you just checking the square and making sure everything's level and together it, you know they just you want this to be right even though it's the inside wall and it won't be seen that much you need to have it right now on the ends of that outside wall also there's concrete I guess is is to protect the beams that held up the building it's just a little extra concrete extension I really didn't have any dowels or anything that I could use for round, but I found this ink pen that was the right diameter. So I took the guts out of the ink pen and just decided to use the plastic from the ink pen and cut those in half lengthwise and then got the, cut them to the proper height to glue on the ends of those walls so I had a good buffer. So there you have the first segment of the uh, tower. Um, you know, this cooling tower, like I said earlier in the video a couple times, uh, I started this years ago. And uh, there are some blueprints that uh, the b &O Historical Society have for this. Um, I did say too that I had started from the Walther's kit. You know, the original Walther's kit, the only thing I used was the underside of this main compartment. And it's a little narrow, so when you look at this side here, it's you know it's not as wide as the original uh, body was on the original coaling tower. However, this way everything is exactly the same, and the height is pretty much about the same. So you know when you look at it, it still does say Grafton. And this I didn't have to start out you know just with the pictures I showed earlier. Like I said, there were blueprints available. But in the Walther's kit, all these side panels, all this, none of them were the same number of panels or the same size of panels. So I ended up scratch building most all of it. And this area right here where this meets here isn't exactly the same as the original one. Um, but, you know, it, it's close enough to me that it says Grafton when I look at it. So we'll continue on in the next video and uh, you go further with this. Uh, I've got a lot more done at this point on this as I've, I've got it in my hands. 
and uh, I just don't want my videos to get too long. I like about 15-20 minutes, no longer than. Uh, you know, when I'm looking at other people's videos, I get bored easy. So I like 15-20 minute videos. It has to be something that's really, really good to hold my attention to go for an hour, say, or something like that. So anyway. You know, most people have 15 minutes at the end of their week at some point in time, and I usually try to post these at the end of the week. I mean, this is going up, you know, probably tomorrow is Sunday morning, so I'm a little late getting this one out this week because I did my uh, reintroduction video earlier in the week. Uh, so hopefully maybe by next week I can start getting them out on a Friday night every week like I did before when I was posting prior to this. Uh, and that's kind of my goal. Uh, we'll see how my time and everything go and how much work I can get done. I think I have probably a couple weeks worth of stuff on this build already accomplished. There's a lot of detail work that goes into this building. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's, that's the kind of nuts and bolts most people really like to see is how I scratch build all the detail stuff. And some of it I was able to buy, the culling chutes. You know, the Walther's kit, I like the culling chutes that came with those, and they're great for underneath. But Tichi also has some culling chutes that are real similar, that on the outside, I think, look a little better than the, than the uh, Walther's uh, culling chutes. So I'll probably use those. And there, there's several other parts that we'll go into more in detail as I get into this next week. So thank you for coming back and starting this new build with me and uh, come back next week and share the next one. Uh, it'll probably take four or five videos maybe to do this, this culling tower and get it finished. Meanwhile, I am starting a couple of other buildings and you know, I have another way to make some free trees for you out there. I think everybody will probably be planting this perennial in their garden in springtime so they can get free trees out of it. Uh, but I really like the looks of these trees from this perennial. And uh, anyway, we'll go into that in a later show as well. We've got plenty of time before spring so you can see the video before spring and order your perennials and get them into your garden so you can make some free trees next year. In any case, like I said earlier, thanks for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate Subscribe and hit the like button down below. It helps my analytics. I'd like to get my channel built up a little bit more and uh, share this with other people out there. Like I said in my earlier reintroduction video, I'd like to get above a thousand subscribers before next summer. And uh, I've got some other people I think they're going to share stuff and help me maybe get out there more in front of people. Uh, you know, I think this content is worth it, uh, but for me to continue to do it beyond next, the beginning of summer or so with my work and my business and everything, uh, it's going to have to be worth my while, and I don't have a ton of money for supplies and stuff like that. Other people have helped me in the past, but, you know, I, I like doing things inexpensively. That's why I do this channel, and I hope you learn from it and you're able to maybe save a few dollars when you're building something for yourself. Uh, but the whole thing is just about jumping out there and scratch building, you know? It's not that hard, and you're going to make mistakes at first if you've never done it before. But if you've ever put a kit together, you've got some kind of an idea about how to do the basics. Uh, you know, it's just manufacturing the parts to make a kit, to put it together, to make it a building. Uh, and it goes the same for, you know, railroad cars or, or anything really out there. So, um... Uh, I'm, I'm rambling. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming back and visiting and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy model railroading.